Hi, my name is Ollie Rush. I am uh, been in the ministry since 1983. I pastored the church for 11 years. I'm a high school graduate. I have two years of college, four years of military service in the Army. Uh, I have two grown daughters. My concern is for and about people to give what assistance I can to each of them. My channel is a health and wellness channel. I am from the old school and believe in home remedies, vitamin E and herbs. I have never been a, a smoker or a drinker of anything but water and mountain dew. But I come before you right now with a question first and a few statements. What is this thing called coronavirus? What causes this virus? Is it caused through uh, air pollution? Well, it's quite possible because 90% of the world's population is breathing polluted air. Knowing that, knowing just that allows us to know that faith brings about the will of God. We use faith to bring into existence the things we wish and hope for. Faith now causes us to hope that this virus that is is killing people today will be defeated. The world's population problem is the worst world's worst pollution problem is ocean pollution. But my question is does Air pollution affect your health the same as cigarettes? And what, what actually causes cancer? Is it in our food only? Or does air pollution cause cancer? What causes airborne sickness? Are diseases carried by the wind? Or do they float as we breathe the air? The stronger the wind, the more airborne diseases infect people. And I'm also, I also heard that diseases cling to clothing. The masks we wear to protect ourselves. Has anybody wondered what is the lifespan of coronavirus? Has anybody wondered about these masks? Even with the mask, death could be just around the corner. You know, you still have to breathe through these masks. If this virus is airborne, as you breathe through these masks, you are inhaling, you still are inhaling a percentage of that virus. Have you ever thought of that? You know, we labor to protect ourselves from the thorns of death, just to find out it slips in from a completely different direction. Who says these masks are completely safe and protective? I know we got to protect ourselves in some way. We have to depend on something. But confidence is something you must have only in proven things. What has been proven about these masks? You tell me. Does the package say that the mask is absolutely safe 
and you will not in any way contract this coronavirus while wearing them. Well, I got a little, I got a little little snippet I want to drop on you right now, and it goes back to what was said in a previous video. Something as simple as salt dissolved in water and sprinkled on the mass. Just dip your fingers in the water and sprinkle it on the mass because salt will kill virus. And if you're only getting a small percentage of it through that mask and that small percentage can still infect you and just dipping your finger in a warm bowl of, a warm bowl of salted water and sprinkling it on this mask when it dries if it will protect you it's worth it's worth doing that salt will prevent any virus from coming through the exact same air holes that you breathe through but i want to i want to discuss something with you before i leave you today 12 of the deadliest viruses that this world has experienced 12 of the deadliest viruses humans have battled viruses before we evolved but vaccines and drugs have allowed us to keep them at bay unfortunately not before they have done serious damage but when the fight against them is very distant they seem to be evolving too i want to go through a number of these these viruses and kind of lay on you about what damage these viruses has caused and can cause to people the ebola outbreak in west africa kills 90 percent of its infected people the marburg virus of 1967 which is similar to ebola both ebola and marbury virus can cause hemorrhagic fever people develop high fever causing bleeding throughout the body leading to shock organ failure and death and here's one we we all know about rabies of the 1920s which when, when it started it destroys the brain but is extremely rare in the modern world a lot of people connect rabies with dogs but most animals can contract rabies hiv very very familiar 32 million deaths it was the world's biggest killer smallpox of 1980 killed one in three of those infected which killed 300 million people it could also cause blindness hantavirus of 1933 it was it, it's a pulmonary syndrome not transmitted from person to person but caused from the droppings of mice things that small creatures that invade your home hope you don't have any influenza the flu the most deadly flu pandemic happened in 1918 and it was called the spanish flu which sickened up to 40% of the world's population and killed 50 million people. The Dengue virus, D-E-N-G-U-E, -E, I pronounce it Dengue, of the 1950s, started in Philippines and Thailand. It was carried by mosquitoes and is likely spread in warm weather. It sickens about 50 to 100 million people a year. 100 million people a year. 
The rotavirus causes severe diarrheal illness in children and it spreads very rapidly. We have another one called SARS Cove of 2002. SARS stands for se Severe Ac Acute Respiratory Syndrome. First appeared in China. Does that ring a bell? And spread to 26 countries. Does that bring another virus to man? It causes fever, chills, and body aches, often progressed to to, progressing to pneumonia and a condition where the lungs become inflamed and filled with pus. Kills 9.6% of those infected and there is no approved vaccine or treatment. Why can't we get something that is a constant uh, a virus killer, I call it a virus killer, that will rid the world or the people of this virus throughout their lifetime. Why can't we find something like that? Now that brings us to the coronavirus. And word has it that it was not engineered in a lab, may have started in bats. And COVID-19 is the name of the illness and not the virus. I just wanted to, to bring you that little, little talk concerning viruses because the one we're in now or we, we, we have now is taking life upon life and it has many people walking in fear but I want to leave this with you fear is not of God When you trust in God and have faith, you don't worry. You don't have to worry. Because as long as you stay within the arms of God and you keep your hand in His, regardless of how the situation looks, God will bring you through. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. I know I stumbled at times, but hopefully I got the message through. Share it with your friends. And if it pleases you, subscribe. And I will be back again because I have, I have quite a bit more that I would like to discuss with you. Bless you, each of you.